Okay, folks, this tutorial is going to look a little more closely at the workflow to get things out of Rhino and into Unreal. Just going to give myself a little bit more real estate on the perspective window here. So one of the things I did in the last video was I talked about how in Unity, there is no easy way to fake a double sided surface. And what you have to do is extrude any of these single sided surfaces into a mesh so that it'll work properly. And I sort of goofed that up a tiny bit in the other video. Um, I'm going to set it straight for you here. So this was meant to be a positional marker. We actually etched uh, or cut into this curb piece uh, a marker so that the contractor knew exactly where it was supposed to be placed. So all of these surfaces which have no dimension but they have a location were meant to be the center line of those surfaces. So if I select a curve and I say extrude surf, there's a few options here that I can do. Um, and let me turn off the options. So normally when you extrude a surface, you're extruding it in only one direction. Uh, what you can actually do is you can say both sides, B for both sides. And then when you extrude it, it's gonna keep that center, which is nice if you are doing what we did where the blade or the support is really the, the center line of these pieces. Um, the next thing is you can specify that this should become a solid see right here so if i don't specify that it should be a solid then it is going to extrude all of the edges as separate poly surfaces and it won't come through as a closed surface um, okay and now i'm just going to extrude it at uh, a eighth of an inch which means it extrudes an eighth of an inch in either direction and the overall thing becomes a quarter of an inch which is pretty close to correct Okay, so anytime you've got a surface and you are gonna be seeing both sides, you want to try and turn it into a mesh and extrude surface works really well. Uh, in the other tutorial, I already did this where I selected the bar top and I went under properties and went to material and I pl a placed oak light on this. And if we turn on our rendered view, you can see that I also went in and edited the texture and in that example, I changed the size to 18 inches. Let's change it to 24 inches for this one. And so you can see it's looking a little bit more like wood, right? I'm feeling a little bit better about that. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is let's turn off rendered view. Um, I also deleted any extraneous curves. So I went under uh, edit, select objects and curves, and I selected all of them and I deleted them. Um, I also deleted everything that was outside of the, the area that I needed. I then took the remaining model and I moved it so that it's located in some relationship to a zero zero, uh, which makes it easier to move around once we get inside. There's also, this, what is this little floating thing here? My people layer. Now let's get rid of that. Okay, so the last thing in the other video I mentioned perhaps is that it sometimes makes sense to export things individually. Like this bar top is pretty rectilinear. I might export that separately. Maybe I export all of the supports separately and maybe these bike rack pieces are identical. If I export one and then copy that one in Unreal, it's a better use of memory than exporting three separate objects. Um, but for expediency and showing you all how this works, I'm going to reselect these. I'm going to say File, Export Selected. And I'm going to save this as Parklet. Let's call it um, Unreal Engine 5. And I'll call it Matte for Materials. I'm saving textures, but it doesn't work. I'll just tell you right now. Um, I don't think that I need to map the Rhino Z to FBXY for Unreal. It's my memory that Unreal actually uses the Z up. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. 
In this case, I'm going to, again, do fewer polygons, but let's check out these bike racks when we get into Unreal. Everything is exported. And here we go. Okay, this is a completely fresh third person template. And when I created this template, I made sure that starter content was on. Um, let me actually pull, let's pull that up. So here I am in my Unreal. I go to my library, I launch 511, pull, put that out of the way. It's gonna load up. And when I say new game level third person, I'm making sure that starter content is clicked. If you've got a really powerful machine, maybe you're also doing ray tracing. I'm not worrying about ray tracing right now. Um, I always like to work in blueprints, not in C++, because I know blueprints and I don't really know C++. But the main thing here is starter content. Make sure it's checked. Okay, so that's what I did. And then this opened up. The first time that you open it, it's gonna take a really long time because it has to go through all those shaders. And I don't wanna make you sit through that. So I've already preloaded this. Now I go to File, Import into Level, and I'm gonna to go to my drive that has my model export where I saved Parklet, Unreal Engine 5, Materials. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna save it under Content. And then these are the options that you didn't see in the other video. Um, we're gonna try and attach it to the root node. Um, not really worrying about anything else here. Um, once we get a little bit further in, people might have questions like importing as dynamic might mean things are movable, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but here we have materials, and yes, we're gonna try and bring these in. But from my recollection, they are not gonna work. Import. Okay. This is gonna pop up another window that's gonna give me a little sneak peek of, of what I'm looking at. Oh, look at that, it actually did bring it in. Huh, I wonder what I was doing incorrect previously. Well, I'm still gonna show you some more stuff about this. Okay, so that is all looking pretty decent to me. I'm gonna go ahead and close this uh, and this is, one of the things that I always get, actually, you know what? That's some of the best looking textures I've ever seen come from a Rhino model. Found invalid character in material name. Um, okay, so you can't have spaces in Unreal, so it fixed that. This is an error that I've always gotten exporting out of Rhino, that there's no smoothing group. Um, Rhino doesn't really deal with smoothing groups uh, that are exportable, from my experience. Uh, okay. So here we are, we're, we're seeing the sort of scene here. And if I try and move this, yep, this is exactly what happened last time. Um, as I try and move this, it is really scrolling through everything that is in that model rather than the entire model. So I'm gonna delete that. And then all of these objects are now showing up as separate objects in here. And can I go ahead and right click and say, create folder? No. Well, let's go ahead and let's create a folder. New folder, call this parklet. Let's grab all of these pieces. And actually, let's not grab this first one, drop it in there. Move here. And some things have changed in five, which is why I haven't seen this before. If I drop this into the scene, it, it becomes a reference to all of that. And it would be really interesting if there was a way to have it just be every, all of them. Hmm. 
I might look into that for, for future use. But the way that I am used to doing this is going back to the content drawer, taking everything from the parklet that is an object and simply dropping it into the scene. Takes a second. If the other thing is here, I once they're imported and before I select anything else, if I right click them and hmm. Oh, no, sorry, not right click them. Uh, if I click the folder while they're selected, I can create a folder that includes all those objects. Parklet. There we go. That's good for organization. Um, and again, we said that we scale these up 2.6, 2.6, 2.6, and that feels a little bit better. I'm also going to, let's rotate this. It's going to be easier to, to walk around it now. Okay, so I brought all of those things in. The shaders are still loading. There we go. Ooh. That is really glitching a little bit there. But only when I'm walking on the surface. Hmm. That is intriguing. I select everything in that folder and just if I move it down a touch well, actually you know what I don't need the street and that might be what's causing the problem so let's select all the sentence again and just eyeball it about in the right place There we go, let's try playing. No, I'm still getting that glitchy behavior. Hmm. And it's definitely worse this time. Okay, the thing I wanted to look at here is that texture is actually looking not bad. I would probably go ahead and just use this texture, but I'm gonna show you how to do things a little bit differently. Um, here are our, if I look from the back, um, you can see the two, this one right here and this one right here, which have been extruded. Um, but in Unreal, there is a nice workaround to let you get away from that. Um, so all of these objects have Material 2 on them. And if I just click Material 2 and open this up, over here on the left-hand side, I can say, this should be two-sided. Apply. And if I close that, now all of the elements are two-sided. And so I don't have to worry about extruding all of the objects if all I want to do is have a clean visualization of a surface. <coughs> Let's try pressing play again. So there we go. We can see all of those pieces. Um, they don't have thickness, so you can see that like some of them will disappear at the right angle. Um, so it's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot easier than having to extrude everything. Um, and then the other thing then is this wood top. So the reason I suggested that you do use the starter content is this folder starter content right here has a whole bunch of materials in it. And I could scroll down and find a nice wood oak wood and drop it on that object and there we go that is our oak top uh, we can also go through and find a, uh, a nice metal so maybe we use this brush steel that's a little too reflective well that's definitely too reflective That's a little bit closer to what we actually used. And you could go ahead and place those materials on all of that. Um, but as we can see, it's also possible to bring those materials in from Rhino. 
Um, it works much better than it used to. I'm sort of very surprised. Um, but then if, see the, this person is uh, material two, I could also create my own material. Let's create a material. Let's call it peeps for the people. You can double click this. Um, I'm gonna hold down the, the three key and click and that creates a three by three that I can plug into base color. And then when I change that to be a color, why did that not take it? That, oh, I forgot to do that. There we go. That might be a little too bright. Apply that. And then I can go ahead and drop that onto people. Oh, look at that. What have I done? We can't forget to make things two sided when we're working with surfaces. There we go. And the other way that I could do this would be, I could select more than one and I could change that to the correct material. There we go. Okay, so now I have a parklet that is starting to look a lot better, it's starting to work. And here are those bike racks, which are coming through and they're just way too uh, polygonized They're They don't have enough facets. So this would be the only thing out of this entire model that's not coming through very well. And I would probably delete these, go back to Rhino and re-export them with a little bit more detail. Okay, hopefully that gives you enough that you can get comfortable bringing some things from Rhino into Unreal if you're looking forward to using Unreal. Uh, and again, we really have a number of options to visualize those things from Rhino right now. We have Iris VR, the Prospect app, which allows us to visualize things in the VR headset uh, almost instantaneously. We can bring things to Unity, and now we know how to bring things to Unreal. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.